a driven entrepreneur who works with other business owners and professionals. She says it's all about keeping the human in social media and harnessing the power of good. Shayna Forrestal joins us to tell us all about her concepts. And again, the interesting about social media, it can get really anonymous, right, Shayna? Yes, it can. People can hide behind a computer and forget to be a human, and that's a little scary, <laughs> but it's yeah, happening. Yeah, pretty abrasive, right? Yes. Yeah, so I, I help people with their social media, and one of the things that I'm passionate about is keeping the humanity in there, because it does become, if it starts to feel like robots, you start to feel like you're not actually talking to a person, and sometimes people get a little abrasive, or get a little mean, or get a little territorial, and they forget that it, we should actually feel like we're sitting next to someone at a coffee table, or at a dinner table, would you say that there? Probably not, because they might pop you in the it's face. True. <laughs> well, and as we have become more kind of isolative, we've when become we're doing isolated. Those yes, things, we really and less considerate. Do forget that people mm -hmm. are around. I mean, this has caused issues where children have committed suicide. Exactly. Over the torturing, you know, the the to the right the bullying, bullying and things like that. Mm -hmm. and it's so a serious what you, problem. What do you do specifically with your clients in that? Arena? Well, with my clients specifically, I help them set up their set up or manage their social media. You know, I have clients come to me; they have social media, but it's a mess. I have clients that have never set it up, and they're like, "I guess I should give in." I had a real estate agent call me yesterday. Been in the business 25 years. I guess I need to give in and get it. I'm like, "Yes, you do." She's like, "No one can find me." Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I help people set up or clean up or manage their social media. But what I try to do when I'm working with my clients, because I do a lot of private consulting one-on-one, -on -one, teaching them how to manage it, or teaching their assistants how to manage it properly, is to remember that they are a human being, to remember that they are dealing with human beings. And it's creating and their it's image, important. correct? Exactly, and it, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I meant to bring a business card to show you, but if I show you my business card, and then I say, who out of these two, my business card has my photo, who out of these two would you rather get to know? The one-dimensional? Are the multi-dimensional. This Shanna you could do business with, right? But this Shanna loves cats and has a lot of nonprofit work that she's a part of and things that are to me way more important than the work that I do. So, you know, your social media should look that way as well. It should be multi-dimensional, reflecting who you are as a company, who you are as a person, not just the one aspect that you're trying to sell or push on that. Well, speaking of the human side, how do you keep social media from taking over your life? You know, that's a good question because, you know, everywhere I go, I, my boyfriend laughs at me because we'll be in a restaurant and I'm like, they're all on their phones. You know, I'll be in the airport, everybody's on a device. And it stresses me out because, because we've forgotten how to look at other people and how to listen. So, you know, I, I have to practice it myself. I'm just as guilty. You know, the average person logs onto their Facebook account 15 times a day. Really? <laughs> And that is the truth, isn't it? Think about it. When you're in the bank line, when you're on the toilet, you are logging on the so Facebook. What do you you think know you are. Uh, what, we used to spend time doing something different. What do you think we used to do versus now? I think more productive the, things. Mm -hmm. I think listening more to each other, having conversations, doing more physical activity, um, you know, reading. Those are all things that are. I had to tell myself, yeah, you got to start reading again because I was like, you know, I just, you're, it sucks up your time. So I think it's important for us to remember to turn it off when, you know, put it away when you're at dinner with your loved ones. Um, take time off. I take breaks because I do so much social media. I'm on it every day on multiple well, accounts, right? Job. It can overcome my life. So I've made sure that my vacations, when I go out of the country a, a week or two a year, I turn it off. And I go out of the country and I let everybody know I'm unavailable. You know, of course I could have Wi-Fi there, but I don't want it mm -hmm. because I need to breathe. And even if you take a weekend, some people can't do a whole week or whatever, take a weekend and just say, guys, I'm going off the grid. I call it going off the grid, going off the grid for a couple of days. And sometimes you need to do that to breathe and just to give yourself the chance to yeah. detox. Are there <laughs> better social mediums to use for certain things? You or? know, that's a loaded question because social media really should be tailored to the person and the objective. Um, I never give a stock answer to my clients. Um, social media depends on who you're trying to reach the message with. You know, if your audience is 20 year olds, you need to be on Snapchat. If your audience is 40 to 50, 60 year old women, Facebook is a good option. You know, so it just really depends on what it is that you're trying to say. Is it a personal message? Is it a business message? Is it a nonprofit message? What is your message and who needs to hear it and where are they? And then that's the social media issue be on. And a lot of people feel pressure to be on everything. I had a client come to me and he had signed up for like 15 social media. I'm like, First of all, you can't afford me to help you with all that. Secondly, it's too much. And secondly, you don't need all that. So we narrowed it down to three. Very like nice. these are the ones you need for your industry. Don't, don't kill yourself trying to do everything. You can't. As long as people can find you in cyberspace, the right people, the right demographic. So that's a great point. Shanna, how do we find you or how do people Oh, find, find me. You? Oh, I'm so mm -hmm. easy to find. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, well, you can always Google Shanna from Louisiana and find me. I'm branded. But beyond that, um, LAFilmResources.com is my company that I operate under. And... 
And there I have some tips. I have blogs about you know things that you can do with your social media. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think about what happens to your social media after you die. I have a whole blog on that. Oh, How do you prepare? Because your information yeah. can disappear, Absolutely. and your family may not be able to access it. Um, yeah, so LA, LAFilmResources.com is my website. My office number is 310-744-1598. Thanks for being on. Of course. Thank you. Absolutely. Coming up next, CCN segment star Anne-Marie Villacana introduces us to artist Alexi Steele. He'll jump in on a raging but somewhat silent debate in the art world. We'll find out what all that debate is about next 